Plato, and he talks about the wise men ruling. That occult concept was passed on down, and you'll read in Francis Bacon's book, The New Atlantis, which originally had a title with the words, uh, a word of Rosicrucian, that they wanted to create a group of wise men to rule in the new world, and that concept has indeed been implemented. <clears throat> that study group or wise men group is called Majesty 12, and it's been given a lot of code names. They just sometimes just seem to happen to meet each other. And originally it was set up six men from the executive committee of the Jason Society, six men of the executive committee of the Jason Group, and six men of other key positions along with the chairman. And I believe in Reagan's administration, they upped the number to 40. And this group on their classified paper papers has the word magic, M-A-J-I-C, stamped on it. But they can't make all the decisions. So they pass some of the decisions on to the policy planning groups, which I've listed over here, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Brookings Institute, the Business Roundtable, the American Enterprise Institute, the Population Council, Resources for the Future, and the Urban Institute. But those people can't make all the decisions, so they pass them on down the line, some of them on down the line, to the research policy planning groups, such as the RAND Corporation, the Stanford Research Institute, and the Hudson Institute. Now, how does this work in actuality? Let's say the Illuminati have made a decision as to something they want to implement. They'll get somebody, say the president, does announce, we have a problem. Then they, the president will say, we have a problem, we need to initiate a government study of this problem. And then they will pour millions of dollars into a government study and maybe after 10 years come up with a large number of findings that are pr printed in these thick books that even researchers like myself don't wade through. And the bottom line is the decision that they had decided upon long ago. And then they get their opinion makers, government councils, national uh, and news medias and intelligence agencies to help them out to make it appear like there's grassroots support at different levels and so the legislators say we had this problem we did this study this is the best advice and they pass a law now if they have any problems along the way they had their covert enforcers like the mafia and the IRS and FBI and ADL to smooth out the opposition <clears throat> Hidden behind the scenes, the Illuminati have created occult area boards in all the areas. Of course, you've got your four regions with 13 states each, and then within each of those, you've got a small section that's uh, given an occult area board. All your different groups working within a given area, if they're working, collaborating with the Illuminati, will send participants or representatives. So as an example of how this works, your own cult in Japan, the Illuminati uh, area board over there uh, decided, let's build up the own cult. They pull recruit or they pull people from other cults into the own, own cult to build it up. <coughs> then when they wanted to make regional government for the United States, what pattern did they follow? their area boards is <clears throat> a twilight world of the interconnections between organized crime and the Illuminati. As you'll notice, some of the Mishpuka and the Triad and the Mafia and the P2 Freemason families are, are tied in blood-wise, family-wise with the Illuminati. But the whole thing is one slimy mess that interconnects. And this one I won't show, but it's, uh, it, it's just on the Illuminati control of health care. We don't have time to go into that. I'll let you glance at this uh, next one here for a minute. Uh, I knew I was going to be coming to the Midwest, and I knew that there were a lot of uh, good farm people. And uh, I have a monograph that explains this particular um, uh, transparency in case you want more information and you can get this through Prophecy Club.
And this is Illuminati and Mob Control of Hollywood. And of course, you'll notice that very important part of that was Music Corporation of America who got sweetheart deals from these groups here. Uh, go through and look at who's in charge of things, you'll find lots of Illuminati names. And this is Federal Reserve, and you'll notice very nice, uh, and nice, that's not a nice word to use here, but at any rate, you'll notice Illuminati names, Rockefeller, Russell, Peabody, Reynolds, Warburg, Pine, Morgan, as original stockholders of the Federal Reserve. This was in my book, Be Wise as Serpents. And I went into detail about how these different components control Christianity. For instance, I went denomination by denomination and gave high-ranking Freemasons who were important clergymen in these denominations. For instance, for the Episcopal Church, this was uh, the list of Freemasons within the Episcopal Church. And here is an example of how Christians are using a Masonic Lodge as a church. Joseph Smith, Jr. created Mormonism. Here are some of his magic amulets that he used. Here's his serpent staff that he used. Here's his ritual athema that he used. Joseph Smith, Jr. came from an important occult bloodline. All of the leaders of the RLDS Church and the LDS Church have been members of the same bloodline. They go back to the tribe of Dan and, and uh, the Merovingians, and uh, I believe that Gordon P. Uh, B. Hinckley, who is now leader of the LDS Church, goes back to the Merovingians via Nathaniel uh, Hinckley, uh, who's tied back into the Plant uh, Jeanette family. And uh, here's some more. This is a green seer stone of Joseph Smith, Jr. and some of his magic parchment. And his successor of the main group, uh, Brigham Young, here is his Masonic pen. And that's Dagward Skull, and that was one of the leaders of the uh, Merovingian Priory of Zion. Now, the man who started the Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell, was a Knights Templar Freemason. And as you can read here, Charles Taze Russell, ritually murdered by the Illuminati on Halloween, has his ashes protected below a pink granite pyramid made from the sacred enchanted rock mountain at a sacred site 18 miles north of Fredericksburg, Texas. The pyramid is in a cemetery in what was Allegheny, Pennsylvania, now Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Real quickly, here are some actual members of the Illuminati from these various bloodlines. John Jacob Astor, for instance, within a matter of a few years, had a monopoly on the entire fur trade. And if you stop to think about it, the fur trade had been going on for centuries before he arrived. And here's some uh, Illuminati from the DuPont family. The DuPonts are um, key people in the military industrial complex every day. Each one of us cannot escape using something made from chemical products that the DuPonts are involved with. They also have been major manufacturers of American gunpowder for our different wars. And this is the Freeman Illuminati family. Gaylord Freeman in charge of the Priory of Zion for a while and he was advisor to two presidents, so was Roger A. Freeman, and here's one of the Freeman in the skull and bones. And this is the Kennedys, JFK's sister married into British royalty. Joseph Kennedy once remarked on one of the Mary 